Okay. Yeah, we're here with Gary Glass. He's the director of the Home Brewers Association. How are you doing, Gary? I'm doing well. Hanging in there. <laughs> Hanging in there, given the, whole, the the craziness environment, the corona craziness, and uh, the COVID-19 um, impact. I see the Brewers Association, too. They're cutting back on staff. And I just, every, everybody's really impacted on this. The home brewers, the, uh, you know, the commercial breweries. I mean, it's alarming. You know, they take surveys and, like, almost half of them are like, we can't, we're not going to make it. Just keep going like this, which is unfortunate. But, um but tell me, what, what do you see the effect of this COVID-19 uh, on homebrewing? Well, I, honestly, we've seen a, an uptick in interest in homebrewing. Uh, okay. you know, certainly uh, talking to a lot of the, the homebrew shops across the country, many of them have seen a, an increase in sales, you know, even though a, a lot of them, most of the brick and mortar stores are having to, to revert to like, call in orders and curbside pickup. Uh, but ma many of those shops are seeing an increase in sales. They're seeing customers they haven't seen in years that are dusting off their, their equipment as well as uh, new people getting into it. So, you know, I mean, we, we call it homebrewing, which means you do it at home. And when you're stuck at home, it's, it's one of the more fun things you can do when you're stuck at home. So I, I've actually been brewing quite a bit more, and I think a lot of homebrewers yeah. are in the same, same boat. All right, cool. So you're still homebrewing at home right now? Oh, or? definitely. Yeah. 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 My equipment, I, I opened the commercial brewery. I don't know where my equipment is. Like I had the home brewery. Well, that's how I started. I was a home brewer. I went from five gallons to 200 gallons. I went to a seven barrel system. And I didn't know what, I didn't know what happened to the home brewery equipment because I'm like, dude, I'm, I'm worn out. I can't go back to home brewing. I'm commercial brewing. You know, when you do that, it's not, it's not like, yeah, it's great. You're going to do it. That it wipes you out. You know, you can't yeah. do anything else pretty much. But, it's an interesting dynamic, isn't it? You know, they do the, uh, uh, you know, for the commercial breweries, they're doing, uh, you know, uh, uh, these, these surveys and they're like, I don't, I don't know if they're going to make it. You know, like about, about half of them, like New York is 46%. I think, uh, well, uh, US, you know, the Brewer Association, I think, did a survey and they're like 46%. This thing keeps going on. I don't know. It might be, and if these guys do close, we have a new emergence of home brewers that might be coming out and saying, you know what, why am I doing my job, which I hate, I love doing this. It might be just another wave, you know, I didn't think about it. But um, That's definitely something that's come up, you know, and you think about, you know, the potential for a lot of business to, to or, you know, taproom breweries that are dependent on people coming into their, their establishment to sell their beer or draft accounts that, just don't exist anymore and so it's going to be tough for a lot of those breweries and if some of them go out of business uh, there's going to be a lot of equipment on the market and got a, maybe, got a lot of home brewers potentially partners. newly unemployed home brewers who might be interested in, in starting up a new business when things turn around yeah but it's just sad the whole the whole situation is sad you never knew like if i said six months ago like yeah we're gonna have this uh, disease scare and the world economy is going to shut down and say it was like nuts but this is what happened and it's affecting the brewing industry particularly hard and it's unfortunate but getting back to you like what's your story how'd you get started i guess you were a home brewer and uh how'd you get uh, you you're now your director of a home brewer association but you're part of the brewer association the national brewer association as well which right is great. yeah the yeah. american home brewers association is a division of the brewers association but i I got started homebrewing uh, back when I was in college, so, uh, early 90s. Uh, have been homebrewing ever since. Started with the American Homebrewers Association in uh, uh, in 2000. So just celebrated 20 years with the American Homebrewers Association, uh, and I've been uh, director since 2006. So it's uh, I, I, you know we started out as the administrative assistant under uh, then director Paul Gatzo, who's now director of the, the Brewers Association Professional Division. Uh, and, you know, at, at the time, didn't necessarily see it as a career move, but obviously it has been my, my full-time job for the last uh, 20 years is working for the AHA. Man, 
when when you say having a job that you love and you're following your passion, I mean, what else can you want, right? It's very, you know, I'm I'm so grateful. Awesome <laughs> yeah, it, it really is, and you know, I, I I tell people all the time, like uh, you know, I I feel like I've got the best job in the world because my my yeah. job is to serve the the homebrewing community, and like, I don't know any better people than the homebrewers that I've met over the last twenty years. Oh, yeah. It's it's just an honor to be able to to serve our members. Oh yeah, tremendous people, and even the commercial brewers. I mean, that's why I jumped into it because I just met a whole bunch of people, and they didn't have any secrets. They're like, "Yeah, I'll we'll help you out," and and we helped each other. You know, I mean, it's I it's a very and, unique yeah. business in that way. Yeah, and it's not like you know, uh, you're competitive, of course. I'd rather have my keg on that tap line than you, but <laughs> at the same time, you could do collaborations together. You know, and mm -hmm. you have beers, and you celebrate together, and you have stuff in tap rooms and. Just that's what drew me to it, and, and I think the people here are tremendous, and it's worldwide. You know, I go to these events like the CBC. I went last year. It's fantastic. I'm meeting people worldwide. Great American Beer Festival. You know, I get these media passes, which is awesome. I, I appreciate the Brewers Association uh, for doing that, and I'm very disappointed that this uh, CBC got canceled in San Antonio. And it's like, wow, you know. But um, you know, what are you going to do? Yeah. But. Um, you know, how, how many people like homebrew in the U.S.? You know, do you have any of those facts? Or? Yeah, we estimate that there's at least a million homebrewers in the United States. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, and it's a it's a big business. We did a we did an economic impact uh, study a few years back, and uh, the, the direct economic impact of homebrewers in this country is uh, over seven hundred fifty million dollars. It's not it's not small oh. that it's. It's almost a million with a, a billion with a B, right? That's a lot of money. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's interesting that it's uh, it, it's legal too. I mean, you can do you know if you, when once you go commercial, is everybody looking at you? But you can homebrew. You know, you can have, you can take grain and you can you know mash it in and and ferment it and have beer and you can have it at home. Which is I don't think they can do it distilling yet. I don't think they can distill. Uh, home distillation is not legal, but it is legal. Yeah. To, to make beer in all 50 states. As of, as of 2013, all 50 states are allow homebrewers to, to make beer at home. That's awesome. And say if, if you wanted to get into homebrewing, like somebody wanted to get into it, I mean, what would they do? Um, would they go to the local homebrew shop? I mean, how, how, what would you do? Like, if you said, yeah, I, never did, I always wanted to do it, but I never did it, but now's the time. So what would you think? Uh, you know, I, I personally would recommend uh, first, you know, we, we have a lot of free resources on our website, homebrewersassociation.org, and some videos that kind of take you through the process so you can see what you would be doing and, and get, a, get a sense of, like, does that sound like something I want to do? Uh, and, then, and then I would take from there, go, go to a local homebrew supply shop, or, you know, these days, call your local homebrew supply shop and uh, find out what, what uh, equipment they have available for anything that you might need uh, and, and get, uh, get started that way. I definitely recommend starting out simply, you know, um, do, do an extract batch with the you know, malt extract. Uh, don't try and brew from scratch, going through the whole mashing process. Because yeah. so, um, that just adds a, a layer of complexity. You can always add that later. Uh, but, you know, if you want to if you want to succeed your first time, keep it simple and just do, uh, do get, get yourself a, a, an extract recipe kit and and brew from there and uh, there's plenty of those out there you can brew just about any style you could imagine so uh, that's where i would start and that's kind of what i did and i think everybody's done it like doing on their stove like in the kitchen just yeah. just my first one. there's like smoke all over first there wasn't boiling right like the thing wasn't boiling I'm like what am i going to do the thing's not boiling so i just like, wait 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 finally started to boil and um the malt extract, just to explain people who don't understand, I guess it's the, there's a mashing process where you have hot water. And then what you do is you steep the grain in that water and, and it converts the starch to sugar. And then you extract that liquid out, you know, it's called wort. Uh, but that's all done for you with this malt extract, right? Right, exactly. So, so, you, so you can <laughs> skip the equipment, the, the time, the process, like it saves a lot of time just skipping the whole mashing process. and. You know, like you, like you said, it is, you got to steep the grains at a certain temperature, and like it, it, it can be a little bit complex and, and a bit intimidating for for yeah. for a beginner. Um, it's a lot of fun. I I love doing it, but um, I think you know for for your first time out, I'd I'd recommend just just, just using extracts yeah. and avoiding yeah. that 
that whole process. And if you want to take it to the next level, yeah, you can get a get a cooler and convert it. I got like a Rose cooler. And those, yep. Uh, and then yeah, convert it. I had a bag, uh, a big bag, you know, like a big mesh bag. I lined it with and just do my green in. And, yeah. So it's, it's cool. I mean, we got a video on our website to, to show you how to convert a cooler too. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. Cool. That's awesome. Yeah, how to how to, how to how to brew all grain the easy way. Yeah. That's awesome. And then you get the banjo burner and go outside or in the backyard mm -hmm. or whatever and get the propane tank and uh, brew some beer. Yeah, I gotta I gotta see if he around here but he has something like that and they brew some beer with him. I talked to some commercial brewers because I. Uh, I, I don't have my other brewer anymore, but I have, do have recipes, and we're, we're thinking about collaborating, maybe taking one of my recipes and entering it into the GABF. To your knowledge, I mean, are they still doing the GABF? Or, or yeah, still? Cur currently, currently still planning. Obviously, we're, we're looking at various potential scenarios, but you know, our, our dates are in late, G, uh, late September. So, uh, yeah. You got to see because now yeah. it's starting with the process. Like you got to start to see, do you want to do this or not, and then you got to start to get the recipe of uh, you know, how many beers you're going to submit. So I think that process is going. I better move fast. I got to talk to these guys again. <laughs> maybe go down. Maybe do something with them. Yeah, they were into it. You know, uh, I got to I got to contact them again. But um, yeah, and then National Homebrew Day. I guess tomorrow you said uh, there was a certain day, but then on May seventh. Uh, May seventh is is National Homebrew Day. It was I recognized by Congress back in 1988. Uh, so we every year we we celebrate uh, National Homebrew Day with uh, uh, an event we call Big Brew. Uh, so that's you know, when we do that on the first Saturday of May. Uh, so we encourage people worldwide to to brew. Generally, we you know in a, in a typical year we would can you know encourage people to get together to brew. Um, obviously, that's not going to work for this year. So we set it up as a, uh, what we call a virtual big brew. Uh, so we're, we're encouraging oh. people to pledge to, to brew on, on May 2nd. And we've got a couple of recipes, like suggested recipes. But really the point is for the entire homebrewing community to get together brewing on the same day, uh, you know, bringing people together even when they can't physically get together. That's cool. I got to, I got to check that out. Well, tomorrow's the, yeah, well, we're recording this on a Friday. Tomorrow is the uh, the first uh, Saturday. It's my birthday too, so I should go out and do something for my birthday. Right? Yeah, happy birthday! That would be appropriate. Right? Your birthday. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> do that, right? But uh, that's awesome. Yeah, so I, it's a great. Um, you know, the home brewers are awesome. It's a great thing to get into. I mean, you know, like I said, well, I'm I'm a CPA, so I was doing some. That's how I got into a director of water for a company, and I'm like, oh my god, is this it? You know. So I had the idea of, of doing beer at home and then uh, people liked it. And then one thing led to another and then we did a Kickstarter and raised some money. People were giving me money to random people. I'm like, all right, I got something. And then we opened the brewery, but it was a fantastic journey. And I met so many great people. And, um, you know, I started this podcast as well because I, I really have a passion for beer. And I feel really bad for all the brewers. Like I know what they are going through. Like it's hard like, to build something and being in a, being a brewery for 10, 20 years and all of a sudden, like they just shut the spigot off and, and you're like, what do I do now? Because the whole, the whole model for smaller breweries is like come into the tap room, right? Because that's where right. the margin is, you know, I mean, the smaller brewery, I did both. I did a tap room and I also did, you know, some distribution as well, which, which went well, but then, you know, as competition grew, it's just, it didn't go well anymore. But, uh, a lot of these breweries are doing like the curbside, like you're saying, you know, uh, you can't go into the tap room, but you can order from them and um, you can uh, pick, pick beer up. So, uh, you know, I would encourage people for their local communities, find your local brewery and go out and get some beer. Uh, I got to do that too. Today, I'm going to check and see who's in my area. I'm in Florida right now. I'm going to take care of my parents for a little bit for a couple of weeks, but I'm going to go back. I'm in New York as well. But down here, I got to check it out and see who's, who's local and go there and maybe get a growler or something and just support them, you know? Sure. Yeah. I mean, they definitely need the need the support. So, I, I mean, as as a home brewer, I, I have a have my own kegerator. So, uh, what I've been doing is like my my local taproom brewery, been supporting them by buying buying kegs. Just to, they're they're in a situation where they they have kegs of beer that they can't they can't sell. They can't 
you know, get it out to their, you know, <laughs> nobody's it's, buying uh, tags and. You can uh, still yeah. buy kegs from them, right? Or yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah, you know, yeah. we that's that's what we're doing, is, and, and we can do that as as homebrewers. But you know, for people who don't have those, you know, a draft system, uh, you know, the most of those most of those breweries are probably doing curbside, can can uh, fill growlers or yeah. uh, or or uh, you know, I, actually that that my local brewery. I, the last time I was actually inside my homebrew supply shop. Uh, one of the owners was was buying bottle caps from the homebrew supply store. They got some bottles from a local brewery, got some caps from the from the homebrew supply shop, and they were doing their first bottles. And, cool. Uh, you know, the, you know, everything had previously been draft, and that just wasn't going to work. So, they had a bunch of beer and innovate. You know, innovate yeah. and um, make it happen. A lot of the breweries are being very creative. You know, and a lot of thank God some of the states are relaxing their their rules. And allowing to go or you know delivery services which is fantastic some states are not which i'm really i'm not really happy about i mean jesus these guys are in the community you know help them out you know um which i'm just disappointed about and i want to get involved in like legislation too i mean i think you know if i can get some free time go to these there's a lot of antiquated antiquated laws which are ridiculous you know and they're just horrible for um for breweries and, and what I like what I wanted to do like I couldn't cross state lines unless I had a distributor right I was a, a, you know, a small nano brewery if I didn't have a distributor I couldn't sell it to Massachusetts Massachusetts is like five minutes away like I was rolling on the board but I couldn't do it you know mm -hmm. and a lot of people in mass were coming up and saying you know I was in New Hampshire they're like yeah how can we get our, your beer on tap I'm like I can't I can't get it on tap at your place it's stupid so um that I'm going to try to crusade on that and try to get people involved in that too. And I know the Brewer Association is doing that as well. They're, they're trying to overturn these laws. Yeah. yeah, yeah, for sure. And, uh, and one of the best ways to do that is work with the state brewers guilds. Is they, they can collectively work towards changing state laws. And they've done that. Yeah, sometimes you've shown up at the you know, assembly meetings at the New Hampshire in the Capitol there. And they say, oh, wow, okay, yeah, maybe this law is uh, pretty antiquated and let's, let's fix it which is good. So, all right. Hey, um, Gary, I appreciate you being on. And, um, you know, um, if anybody wants to get you hold you directly for any questions, how can we do that? Um, you know what? You can get to our website at homebrewersassociation.org or my, my email address is Gary at brewersassociation.org. Excellent. All right. Well, I appreciate your time today and uh, thank you and uh, stay safe during this, this crazy time. And uh, I guess brew and drink beer, I guess that's a good thing. And, uh, you know, I think, uh, and then if everyone wants to get into the uh, beer business or, or home brewing, I mean, to Google your local homebrew shop and, you know, they have clubs there too. I think they at least need to meet virtually. I don't know. Maybe can't in person, but I'm yeah. sure they're doing probably Zoom meetings and talking about stuff and, that's one of the things I wanted to do too, like do a virtual happy hour. Mm -hmm. Like everybody has a beer and just talk about it. That's something that I'm, you know, I have so many ideas. I gotta do this, but I think I'm going to do this starting on a, maybe next Friday. I'll start it and see who wants to show up and just put it out there. And uh, hey, we'll all drink a different beer and we'll talk about it and see, see how we can help each other. So, all right, man. Okay, awesome. Gary, I appreciate you being on and I, I hope you have a great rest of the day. I'll talk to you soon. Okay. Thank Thanks. You very much. My pleasure, Michael. Thank you.